Hey, what's up? It's Václav. So this is the fourth part of the five-part series uh, about making automations and home assistant. So we are almost at the end, so we have one more to go. If you didn't watch the previous ones, you should really go back and watch them because really starting from the end makes no sense. In the previous videos, uh, we have uh, used automation from a blueprint and we created a first simple automation in the second part and the third part. Uh, I will show you everything about making complex automations with different uh, decision uh, logic, with choosing different commands based on conditions and uh, while loops and, and so on. So it's really cool. Uh, we touched a little bit on templates, on those expressions in the curly brackets, and uh, I didn't go much in detail, so this is what we're going to do today. Uh, because we're gonna need that uh, in the next part where we're gonna be talking about creating blueprints. So this is gonna be the next part. Today we're gonna be talking about templating. So let me show you what it's about. Now, what are templates? Well, instead of giving you a long theory, the easiest way is to actually show them to you what they do and, and I think you will understand what they are used for. So the easiest way to show it to you is to go through the developer tools in your home assistant and in here you will get into a page which has uh, five useful tabs and the uh, the first one we're going to be using so we're going to be working today for example with the entity sensor test so this is a uh, garbage collection sensor which has a state and a few of the attributes we're going to be playing with those and then uh, in the template there is a page which uh, it's like a template designer uh, which by default it's showing you this uh, default uh, template as, as an example so but I'm gonna delete it not to uh, confuse you uh, and we're gonna be using this uh, to design and to test our templates and, and the way this screen works is uh, here in the middle you can write your template and here on the right side it will show you the result what this template does. And so to show you a simple template is if I write here a single constant uh, the result of 1 plus 2 is 1 plus 2. Well obviously this is not right right because it's just saying 1 plus 2 is not calculating it and if I want to uh, show what the result is I will close this was 1 plus 2 in double curly brackets and this is going to create our first template. So I'm going to use double curly brackets in here and in there and as you can see it calculated what is inside this and this is our first template. Now obviously you wouldn't use templates for calculating the result of 1 plus 2 because everyone knows that 1 plus 2 is 3, right? But you, if imagine instead of those numbers, you would have a, a state of a sensor or of an entity which is changing, and then you're already getting somewhere, right? So if you would have, for example, a temperature sensor in centigrade, you could create a formula to translate it into Fahrenheit. Uh, so on this page, you have uh, two important links. The first one is telling you that the templates are based on Jinja 2 templating engine. So what is Jinja 2? Well, it's based on Python. It's not really a Python, but it has some similarities. And if you click on that, it will uh, show you interesting things about it. Uh, it's also used for web pages, but you don't have to worry about that. But in here, it shows you that it has three basic building blocks. One is expressions, so you saw that, we just uh, used this. The other one is statements, we will get back to it uh, a bit later. Or you could write comments in here, which I actually haven't used, but it's actually good that they say it. But in here uh, you have the control structure, so here you could actually see the, the, the syntax and the different uh, options available. So it's out there, I'm not gonna go through that, but there is a link and you can refer to it. The other important link there, it's a link to the Home Assistant templating extension documentation. So we're going to be using that a lot today. Uh, and this one, again, let me highlight a couple of important things. Uh, first of all, that the uh, templates are used really for three things. Uh, the first thing, 
Well, they list it as a last, but it's used for templating, automation templating, which is the reason why we're talking about it today, because this uh, uh, set of videos, it's about automation. So this is why we talk about templating. And especially when we're gonna be in the next video talking about blueprints, it's gonna be essential. Because what blueprint is, it allows us to configure uh, different selectors and parameters. And those parameters we're gonna be using in the templates to replace them by the actual value you selected. So this is why we're talking about templating. So I'm giving you a building block for the next video, if you will. But there's two other uses uh, for templates. One is to format the uh, output, for example, in the if you want to send notification, instead of saying the temperature outside is very high, you might say the temperature outside is and then double curly bracket and you can use the value of the actual temperature sensor and it will tell you it's, I don't know, 15 degrees. So this is one important use. And the other one is you could use it uh, to create template sensors. And we're gonna get there as well. On the last video, I was showing you a sensor that was calculating how many people are home and we're gonna be recreating this sensor today. So I will show you how that works. And then you have the automation. The other thing is here we talk about state objects and uh, you don't have to go into architecture, but uh, there is this thing about, uh, it refers to developer tools. So we started with that. So it's in here. And here we talk about states. So it says that uh, there is a couple of things how you can get to a state of a sensor from the template. And uh, there are three that have access to the state. One is to write states.entityID. The other one is states and then in brackets the name of the entity. And the third one is a logical test asking if the state of the entity is something then it will return true or false. And then you have other three which are similar but instead of the uh, state it's uh, checking the attributes. Now, why am I talking about that? These are actually quite important because there are two major differences between those two methods. The first one is, here is a warning that it actually tells you that it's highly recommended to use the second one instead of the first one. Because the second one, uh, what it does is, if the entity is missing or offline or doesn't exist, it will return value unknown if it doesn't exist but uh, everything is gonna work, it's not gonna generate any error, it's gonna be handled properly. The first one, if it doesn't exist, it will create an error. So why would you actually use that? Well, because of the second difference. Because the second difference says, uh, this first one returns the state object. The second one will return state string. Stop talking. Let's uh, let me show you some so some demos. So I was showing you here this uh, object uh, sensor test. So uh, let's get to the well. Let's start with the state. So here I'm gonna go uh, for the double curly bracket, and I will use the example state with the sensor test, and I will close the double curly bracket, and it will show you that it is two, right? So this is the value of this uh, sensor state. Well, not very interesting. Uh, the second example, what I'm gonna use, we're gonna go uh, for the attribute. So we're gonna go uh, for the state attribute. And here it's gonna be in a quote sensor test. And here it's gonna be the attribute. I will go for days, so it'll show us number six. So I will say days. So we have number six and uh, we can already do some formatting with it. So we can say days and it will show me as a result six days. So it's, it's already a nice example of formatting output. Whilst we in the days, here in the Jinja 2, it was, uh, we were saying that there is a statements or expressions. What we just did was use an expression. Let me show you what we can do with the statements. So first thing I want, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually define a variable. I will say set days equal, and I'm gonna actually copy this part, and I'm going to close that. So if I will now write days, it will show the same thing, it will show number six. It showed me this blank line, 
Uh, and if I want to get rid of this blank line, I need to put minus in here. So this is one of those uh, things about the Jinja that it has those weird formatting things. Uh, so anyhow, now that I have the variable, I can actually format it a little bit. So I can, what I can do is I can write an expression if days equal zero, I will say today, then else if, so this is another command, which you will find here in the templating documentation, days equal one, return tomorrow, else return days as a template days. And then we will close that end of the if block. I will put those minuses in here and now let's play with that. So let's say the days now I'm using the uh, state attribute sensor test, but let's say if the value, so if the value was six, it will show me that. If the value was five, it will show five. If the value was two, it will show two days. If the value was one, it will show tomorrow. And if the value was zero, it will show today. So this is what this whole thing does. So now that you use it, if you use the garbage collection sensor, I have this verbose state option, which I hate very much, because I think with using this, you could render this whole verbose status pretty much redundant because you could format it using this uh, single statement somewhere in your Lovelace dashboard or wherever you want to use it. Now, obviously, this uh, days, by the way, I don't have to use this uh, set days equals uh, the value of the sensor. I could have used this here uh, instead. Uh, I have used this variable in this demo, uh, mainly because I was able then to change the value and show you how it works. So this is the reason I use this set variable in here. OK, let me show you another example. Let's go for the state attribute and I'm not going to use days, but I'm going to go for the next date. So this is the value of the next date, which is a date and time in the standard format, which is a year, month, date. And then there is this T and the time and then the time zone, which is kind of ugly, but this is the standard format. So let's do something with it. So it's called next date. So I'm going to just copy this whole thing. But instead of days, I'm going to say next date. So it's showing me uh, the very same thing as uh, in this tab in here. But what I can do is I can use this pipe symbol, which is like this vertical line and send the value into a command. And the command I'm going to use, I'm going to go to templating and I'm going to search command uh, F for date. There it is. So I'm going to go for date and time. It shows me a bunch of useful functions I can use for working. I can actually format it as timestamp. And then there is also this function timestamp custom. Where we can use some formatting string to format the date in whatever we want. If I would just pipe this using this pipe symbol into S timestamp, it will show me this weird number. And this is a Unix format timestamp. The reason why we're using it is because we can use this timestamp in the other functions. This timestamps, what it is, I think it's the number of seconds since the, I think, January 1st, 1970. But doesn't really matter. We're going to use the function timestamp custom. And in here, uh, I can write a formatting string. So if I would write uh, percent Y, it will be year. So it's 2022. If I would write M, it's going to be a month. And if I'm going to be writing uh, percent day, it's going to be the day. So we have this, uh, this format. But if I want to have it in different order, obviously what I can do is I can just uh, change it in whatever format and order I want. So, so now you know that you could actually do date formatting based on your country preference. There is a link to this whole documentation. There is a lots of those different symbols. Uh, so for example, if I would write a capital A, capital B, D and Y, it's going to say Wednesday, March 9, 2022. 
So here we go. Now you know how to format a date. There's also an interesting function time delta that you can use to offset a date by a specific number of hours, minutes or even days. And we're going to be using that later in the example. So remember that. Now let's go for another example. I'm going to actually use a calendar with the English holidays. There is an attribute called holidays. So I'm going to just copy the value of this one and it's called holidays. So I'm going to go to the templates and uh, in here I'm going to go for state ATTR. So this is the entity and the attribute is called holidays. So it, it, it's quite interesting. So what I can do is I can use again uh, this statement. So I will do a uh, curly bracket percent and I'm going to use this for statement. And I'm going to call it holiday in and I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to display holiday and I'm going to close it by end four. Now, again, uh, I need to put those minuses in here to get it a little bit cleaner. And here uh, I get the uh, list of those days because this is actually returning a dictionary and dictionary it's uh, it's a set of values where there is always one key and one value so the key is this one and this is the value so if I would actually say I'd like to get the value I would have to do something like I will just copy this in here and it's gonna get very ugly but I'm, don't worry I'm gonna simplify it a little bit so I'm gonna do this and I in a square brackets I'm gonna say the key and here is going to print the key and the value next to it there were other ways to do it actually easier ways because I can say here I'm going to say it's gonna be a I'd like to return two values date and holiday but in here I would have to type something called items now you don't have to worry about it just remember it but now what I can do is I can uh, simplify it and I can actually in here uh, write holiday and here I can say this is a date so this is date and holiday and I have the same result just a little bit simpler so on itself this is quite useless but what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this one to uh, clean it a little bit. So, But what I can do is I can for example use a uh, expression if let's say Easter in holiday and then I can do end if and I would have to put again those minuses in here to make it a little bit cleaner and uh, here we go so, so now you have the three dates in 2021 22 and 23 when there is an Easter Monday so uh, now we're getting somewhere okay so this uh, another useful example now there is one more thing I have uh, promised you to come up with a template that is counting number of people that are home uh, and for that we're gonna use actually something similar as this dictionary um, and uh, the dictionary is this right you remember that this is the set of a uh, key and the value now what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna use another thing here in the very top where we are there you go so we're using the states dot and the entity ID but you can actually use it states and domain to get list of all the uh, entities in that domain and we're gonna use that uh, for the uh, for the presence so so we're gonna do that double curly brackets again and we're gonna use uh, states dot person so let me see if I do that it will show something template domain states person ugly thing so if I would type in here person dot it will show me all of those persons and, and their states in here, right? So there is two people home, one is somewhere else and one is not home. So I have two people that are home. So let's try to calculate it in the template. So states person 
what I can do is if I would uh, pipe it into a list, it will kind of show me what you just saw. What I can do is here in the template, there is a command if I would uh, search again uh, called select attribute, which is working with groups. I can filter by this command select attribute. So let's do that. I will say here select attribute. Attribute is state because we're looking at state it has to be equal home and I close that. So if I would list it again, now you see there's two of those, Clara and me. So this it returned me a list, which is, list is something similar to dictionary, but it has a different format. But what I could do is now that I have this list, I can actually count it. So I can count how many items there are in the list. And now it's two. So I could see that there is a two people at home. If I would say not home, so there is one person that is not home, but I really interested in number of people home. So I can have a, I can create a template center with this formula and I could use that as a condition in my automation. In fact, I do not have to create a uh, template center because I can use this as a condition in the automation itself. So I can here say equal equal one and it will tell me it's false because there is two people at home. I would say two, it will tell me, yes, this is true. There is two people home. If I would have this condition in my automation, what it's gonna do is it will continue with the automation if there is one person at home. So now that uh, we have played with the templates, I'm gonna actually go through one of the automations for the uh, garbage collection holidays. We're gonna go through that and I'm gonna explain you how it works. So you could see actually something real. So, so we're gonna look at the uh, automation move on holiday and uh, I'm gonna open it in this debug and show it in here in the automation config. And I will, I'm gonna walk you through, because right now we should understand what it actually does. So this automation, it has a trigger. We did it last time, we don't have to go through that. Then there is the variable, uh, which we covered last time as well. Now you might be asking me why there is a variable. Well, the reason for that is this automation was created using a blueprint. This is the configuration of the blueprint. Now I can also go through in here, if I go to this, uh, there is this uh, entity for the calendar, which is called calendar Swiss holidays. We creating a variable that we can then use within uh, the templates. So then we have a repeat loop. So we did that last time, right? Repeat loop, it basically loops this piece of code number of times. How many times there comes our template? So there is the count and it, the count is trigger event data collection dates. And that's something if I would go into the changed variables. Now you, you see that this event was triggered by this event of the garbage collection loaded and it received together with that two attributes. First attribute is the entity ID. So this is the sensor which triggered that. And the second attribute is a list of the collection days it calculated. So there is a number of collection days. I don't know how many there are. And I'd like to iterate through all of those. So what it does is the number of iterations is actually the count of those dates in that list. Because what I can do is then I can uh, refer to each of those dates as a uh, trigger event data collection date. So this is again, this is this list, but in the square brackets, I can use this repeat index minus one. Now what is repeat index? I think we covered that in the last video, but let me repeat. Repeat index is the variable that is automatically created for the repeat loops that is increasing automatically for each run. So the for the first run, it's gonna be one. When it runs for the second time, it's gonna be two and so on. And I'm using it to refer to these items in this list, but those items in the list, they are numbered with the first one starting from zero. So this is item number zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. So to refer to those, I'm using this trigger even data collection dates in the square brackets, this repeat list minus one. And here, this is a condition, which is a template condition, and I'm checking whether this uh, date 
is in this holiday entity. So this is the Swiss holidays, attribute holidays. So this is the one uh, we were using in the previous example when we were looking for the Easter, if you remember. If it's there, then I like to move the holiday. If it's not there, then I'm not gonna run the, uh, the rest of this loop and uh, I'm gonna jump for the next iteration, right? If it is there, it means that our collection date actually felt on a holiday, on a public holiday. So I'm gonna trigger a service garbage collection offset date, which is a service which I created for the uh, garbage collection. And it has three parameters. One is the entity ID, which is the one that triggered the automation. The date, it's actually the date we want to move. And then for how many days? So what is the offset? Well, technically we could say for one day, but what if this next day is also public holiday, right? So that's, that we're getting a little bit complicated. So what I'm doing in here, theoretically I could say one in here, I kind of hope that if I move that collection for the next day that it won't be public holiday again. But uh, I'm doing it a little bit smarter. So I'm actually uh, setting the uh, offset for one and then I'm looking for uh, and searching uh, through the days and checking whether they are not public holiday as well. And if they are, I keep increasing the offset until I find one which is not public holiday. And then I'm gonna re re return the offset because I have found for how many days I have to move. So I'm not gonna go through all that because it's gonna be a little bit long the video then, but you can run through it in your own pace. Uh, or if you want me, I can go through it. I can create separate video for it, but I think it'll be too long already if I do it today. Then once it's actually out of the loop, it will call service garbage collection update state uh, with this entity ID and it's gonna recalculate the list and uh, call all that. So now you know what this whole thing does. There is one more uh, automation which I use, which is when the holiday is in week, which is very similar to this one. The only difference is uh, in the condition in here, I am uh, not only checking whether there is a public holiday on that specific day, but I am checking all the days uh, in that week before that day. So I'm here having a for loop where I am checking the days in that week before that. Otherwise, it's uh, exactly the same. Uh, but again, I'm not gonna go through that. Now, there is uh, one more thing before we end today. Uh, I'm here using this uh, ns, which is a namespace variable. I'd like to explain it a little bit. I know it's kind of complicated, advanced, but I think it's gonna help you. Uh, so I'm gonna delete all this. So let me let me show you an example and show you how, how that works and why I do that. So uh, let's say we have a variable called a, and I will call it equal one. And I'm gonna close that. Now, uh, then I can uh, create a uh, sort of a loop in the template for i in range five. So range five means it'll iterate five times from one, two, three, four, five. So just to show you what the range does, if I would just uh, type in here in double curly brackets, uh, the value of the i variable, uh, you will see that for each pass, it will increment from zero to four. Here I have to say set, right? Right, so again, I forgot those uh, minuses. So this is what they do. So you see, it's, uh, it, it, it iterates five times from uh, zero to four, right? So this is for this for loop does. But this is not what I want to show you. Uh, I want to show you is if I would increase a equals a plus one. And when you do that, you would kind of expect that the a is going to be increasing. So at the end, if I print a, it should be six, right? But it's still one. Because there is something uh, which I hate about the Jinja, uh, which is called namespacing. Uh, and it means is if you have a nested block, so this is sort of a nested block, 
And if you, if you do something with a variable in this nested block, if you get out of this nested block, the variables will be, will be local to the nested block and uh, it, it won't actually change outside of this block. So this is a stupid thing. But fortunately they have something called namespace and uh, I can create a variable called, I'm gonna say it's a namespace, let's, let's call it something else, let's call it namespace ns and here I say a equals one. So I'm going, I'm creating a namespace and within this namespace, so it's like a global namespace and within this one, I'm creating variable and setting its value to one. And in here I can say ns dot a equals ns dot a plus one. And here if I would check ns dot a, now it's six. Uh, so this is sort of a workaround for when you want to count something in the loop and then use it outside of this loop. Yes, I hate that. No, there's nothing I can do about that. This is not a home assistant thing. It's coming from Jinja. And uh, for that reason, if you would look at those automations in here, in there you would see that I'm using those namespaces for the offset and for the boolean value whether it's been fine or not because otherwise if I wouldn't do that I would just go through the loop and I will say yeah it was found it's true and then I'm gonna get outside of this nested block and it will still think that it's found is false or it wouldn't work so I have to use those namespaces uh, inside those nested blocks. Anyhow, so now I got a little bit deep. I guess I lost half of you, but if you survive, congratulations. And uh, I think I will end it in here for the templates today. So that's templating. I hope it helps you because templates, uh, they're used uh, all across Home Assistant, not only in automations and scripts, but you could also use them in sensors and you can use them in the Lovelace UI. Yeah, so they're quite powerful actually. If you understand them, you have a key of uh, in, in to really use the power uh, that is locked inside the Home Assistant. So I hope you find it useful. Uh, so I'm gonna finish the video here, and uh, I see you in the next one. In the last video, where we're gonna talking about creating our own blueprint. It's gonna be really pulling all the things that we have done so far together. So it's gonna be pretty easy. Uh, and uh, it was pretty cool. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.